Ads heard during the podcast that are not in my voice are placed by third-party agencies outside of my control and should not imply an endorsement by Weird Darkness or myself. Stories and content in Weird Darkness can be disturbing for some listeners and is intended for mature audiences only. Parental discretion is strongly advised. Supernatural literature is filled with accounts from some of the most haunted houses in America. Time and again, we've seen the lists of places that every ghost enthusiast is supposed to visit – the Lemp Mansion, Winchester Mansion, Whaley House, Myrtle's Plantation, and the list goes on. But what about those houses that are not so widely known? Perhaps they are only local haunts or places that are off the beaten path but many of them are just as haunted, or even more so, than the American haunts that have become so famous. I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Welcome, Weirdos! I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Here you'll find stories of the paranormal, supernatural, legends, lore, the strange and bizarre, crime, conspiracy, mysterious, macabre, unsolved, and unexplained. Tonight, we look at both the well-known and not-so-well-known most haunted places in America. If you're new here, welcome to the show, and while you're listening, be sure to check out WeirdDarkness.com for merchandise, my newsletter, to enter contests, to connect with me on social media. Plus, you can visit the Hope in the Darkness page if you're struggling with depression or dark thoughts. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. Now, bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the Weird Darkness. The Bell Witch Cave, Adams, Tennessee. Few accounts of ghostly phenomena in American history can compare to that of the Bell Witch. Beginning in 1871 and lasting nearly four years, the Bell family was plagued by disturbing experiences in their home. What began as simple yet inexplicable rapping and scratching noises quickly escalated into violent personal attacks. When the entity responsible for the anguish found its voice, it claimed to be the Witch of Kate Batts, a former neighbor who had fostered resentment for John Bell over bad business dealings. John fell ill and would eventually die, all at the hands of the witch who was more than willing to take credit for his demise. The spirit left the family in peace for seven years, only to return to taunt them again for weeks. Whether or not the ghost was the spirit of Kate Batts or something far more sinister, nobody really knows. But it is speculated that when it retreated, it took up residence in a cave close to the Bell home near the Red River. Many who visit the cave today report experiences such as hearing the sounds of footsteps, seeing apparitions, and even feeling as though they have been pushed or slapped. Some believe the ghost of Kate Batts is the culprit. Others believe the cave's famous resident was never a human at all. Waverly Hills Sanatorium, Louisville, Kentucky This massive structure was built in 1926 to house and treat patients afflicted with tuberculosis, a disease that gripped much of the nation but was particularly prominent among the residents of Louisville. Hundreds of patients were admitted and treated for the disease, but many of them did not survive. Treatments were not only painful and usually ineffective, they were often deadly. Bodies were removed via the Bloody Chute, which was a tunnel leading from the back of the building down a hill to a railway where they were kept out of sight of the surviving patients. By 1943, advances in medicine had nearly eradicated the disease in the U.S., and the sanatorium closed. A year later, it was reopened as the Woodhaven Geriatrics Sanitarium, and would remain in operation until 1982, when conditions and budget cuts led to mistreatment and the neglect of patients and the state of Kentucky shut it down permanently. Waverly Hills has exchanged hands a number of times over the years, 
but one thing remains constant. Visitors to the building continually experience a wide range of paranormal phenomena, from hearing disembodied voices, feeling an ominous presence, to seeing shadow figures move from room to room. With so much death and suffering that occurred within its walls, is it any wonder that the sanatorium is considered one of the most haunted locations in the country? The Myrtles Plantation near St. Francisville, Louisiana This plantation was originally built in 1794 and in many years since has become a home of ghostly legend, the most famous of which tells of a jaded house slave named Chloe who, knowingly or not, poisoned her master's wife and children. Another tale includes the tragic death of previous owner William Winter, who was shot on the porch of the house and then, wounded, made his way into the house and up the staircase to the seventeenth step, where he collapsed and died in the arms of his beloved. While stories such as these would certainly support the claims of paranormal activity within the home, they are, unfortunately, untrue. No record exists of Chloe, and those she allegedly poisoned all died at different times from yellow fever, not from poisoning. William Winter was indeed shot, but he died immediately and did not stumble into the house, much less climb to the seventeenth step. Even so, there are a few ghosts of the Deep South that have made the Myrtles their home. The apparition of an African-American woman wearing a green bonnet has been seen and photographed on the premises. Children are often seen playing in and around the house and peering into windows. The grand piano on the first floor often plays on its own, only to stop as soon as anyone enters the room to investigate. The legends of the Myrtles may not be accurate, but one thing remains true – it is a home with a deep history that continues to haunt visitors to this day. The Lemp Mansion, St. Louis, Missouri The Lemp family began building their empire in the beer brewing business in St. Louis in 1838. Driven and quite successful, the Lemps enjoyed many prosperous years in the industry, but with success also came hardship. Death would first visit the family when it came for William Lemp Sr.'s eldest son, Frederick. In 1901, and at only 28 years of age, his health rapidly deteriorated and he passed away, leaving his father completely devastated. Ultimately unable to pull himself out from underneath the sadness, William retired to his room in the family home on the morning of February 13, 1904, and shot himself with a 38 caliber revolver. His daughter, Elsa Lamp Wright, would follow in his footsteps in 1920 after struggles with a rocky marriage and the decline of the family business. The Lamp plant was eventually sold to the International Shoe Company, which devastated William Lamp Jr. By December 1922, Will had slipped into a terrible depression and social withdrawal and he took his own life as well in the Lemp family home. The remaining Lemp brothers, Charles and Edwin, were largely involved in other ventures. A tragedy would reduce the family yet again. In May of 1949, Charles was found dead in the home that he had loved, a victim of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Edwin passed away at his estate in Kirkwood at the age of 90 in 1970. The family home was sold after Charles's passing, and while it briefly served as a boarding house, it fell into disrepair until 1975 when it was purchased and remodeled as a restaurant and inn by Dick Pointer. During renovation, the Pointer family experienced phantom footsteps and voices in the house. Restaurant staff have reported seeing apparitions appear and vanish at will, glasses inexplicably flying from the shelves, and hearing the bar piano play entirely on its own. In 1980, an article appearing in Life magazine named the Lemp Mansion as one of the most haunted houses in America. The Battlefields of Gettysburg, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania Famous haunts across the country attract large numbers of ghost hunters every year, but few of them can compare to the allure and reputation of Gettysburg. Three bloody days of battle during the Civil War in June of 1863 resulted in a large number of casualties, and this small town was ill-prepared to handle the fallout. Nearly one-third of all the soldiers engaged in battle here were dead by the end of the third day, a catastrophic loss leaving bodies strewn in all directions. The wounded were treated in homes and businesses that were made into makeshift hospitals, while the dead were exposed to and rotted in the Pennsylvania summer heat. 
The suffering and death that occurred in the fields, in local homes, and the surrounding area has left a lasting impression on the land, as is evident by the sheer number of paranormal encounters that are experienced and recorded here. It is said that when the ladies of Gettysburg traveled through town following the battle, their only relief from the overwhelming stench of death were scented handkerchiefs pressed tightly to their faces. Phantom smells of peppermint and vanilla are now experienced by visitors even to this day. Apparitions seem to frequent homes and various other buildings here, disembodied voices and the sounds of war still linger in the air. The most active location in Gettysburg is an area called the Devil's Den. Visitors find it difficult to keep their electronic gear up and running, as inexplicable failure is common here. Many people have also encountered an unkempt man among the boulders who approaches to speak with them and then suddenly vanishes. Soldiers are seen, gunfire is heard, and the weight of the devastation that occurred here is quite often felt. Those who visit the battlefields of Gettysburg come hoping for an encounter with those on the other side, and very few are disappointed. The Stanley Hotel, Estes Park, Colorado This beautiful and historic hotel, which sits in the picturesque community of Estes Park, has been home to ghostly activities experienced by staff and guests alike for years. Famed writer Stephen King was so impressed by the hotel that it became the inspiration behind his novel The Shining. No one knows exactly when the activity began at the Stanley Hotel or even why, but experiences have long been a part of the hotel's mystique. Nearly every room has been host to one phenomenon or another, though most of the activity seems to occur on the fourth floor. Guests often report that items are inexplicably moved in their rooms, and children are heard at odd hours running and playing in the hallways. F. O. Stanley, of Stanley Steamer fame, and his wife Flora opened the hotel in July of 1909, but neither seem to have left it behind. It is not unusual for guests and staff to briefly encounter F. O. Stanley walking through the lobby, and the sound of the piano playing on its own in the music room is often attributed to Flora Stanley. The beauty and comfort of the Stanley Hotel attracts hundreds of people every year, more if you count those who remain unseen. The Winchester Mystery House, San Jose, California Haunted houses are interesting, but there aren't any in existence that can compare to the oddity of the Winchester Mystery House. The story begins with the birth of Sarah Party in 1839 to a family in New Haven, Connecticut. At the age of 23, Sarah married William Wirt Winchester, heir to the Winchester Rifle Empire. Life seemed to be going well until disaster struck four years later. Sarah had given birth to her first and only child, Annie, but the infant fell ill and passed away a mere nine days after being born. Sarah drew inward from the loss and struggled to regain a balanced emotional footing. In 1881, Sarah lost her husband William to pulmonary tuberculosis, which only added to her agony. Urged by a friend to visit a spiritualist medium for guidance, Sarah was told that a terrible curse loomed above her family for all the deaths the Winchester Rifles had been responsible for. The medium relayed to Sarah that her husband wished for her to move on and build a home that she could inhabit with the spirits of those who had lost their lives to the weapon. In order to remain living, Sarah needed to keep construction on the home constant. If she ceased, she would die. Sarah and her vast fortune moved west, eventually settling into California's Santa Clara Valley in 1884. She purchased an existing six-bedroom house resting on 162 acres and immediately began construction on her new home. As time passed, the house continued to grow. Crews worked round the clock to add entire wings, doors that were joined to windows. There were countless staircases that led nowhere, a blind chimney that stops short of the ceiling, closets that opened to blank walls, trap doors, double back hallways, doors that opened to steep drops to the lawn below, and dozens of other oddities. Sarah also maintained a connection to the spirits in her home by communing with them in a seance room she had constructed for that very purpose. After one such session, on September 4, 1922, Sarah retired to her bedroom where she passed away at the age of 83. The mansion is now a California historical landmark 
and many believe that the spirits Sarah worked so hard to appease still occupy the house. Inexplicable footsteps, banging doors, strange lights, and cold spots are just a few of the things reported to have occurred in the Winchester Mystery House over the years. Bachelor's Grove Cemetery, Chicago, Illinois This cemetery sits on land first set aside for burial in 1844. Now largely abandoned and sheltered by trees on the edge of the Woods Forest Preserve, this piece of land has become fairly well known for the accounts of paranormal phenomena that it's produced over the years since the last recorded burial in 1989. Problems arose in the 1960s when vandalism and decay descended on the cemetery. Headstones were broken, stolen, and defaced. Caskets were unearthed and bones strewn about the ground. Rumors of occult rituals taking place also began to surface. Today, the cemetery is unkempt, overgrown, and surrounded by a large chain-link fence, which has proven to be a very poor deterrent for anyone determined to enter the premises. The apparition of a horse has been seen emerging from a small, stagnant pond near the rear barrier of the cemetery pulling a plow and driven by the ghost of a man who had allegedly drowned when the horse plunged into the pond, dragging him under. The apparition of a woman wandering aimlessly around the cemetery holding an infant has also been a common sight, though she does seem unaware or maybe just disinterested in interacting with anyone who encounters her. The surrounding area seems to be equally active, as phantom vehicles have appeared only to vanish on the nearby roadway. For several decades, individuals have reported the appearance of a phantom farmhouse appearing and disappearing from sight in various locations nearby as well. Many cemeteries are often rumored to be haunted. The phenomenon experienced at Bachelor's Grove leaves little doubt that it is. Yorktown Memorial Hospital, Yorktown, Texas Tucked away in a small South Texas town sits a privately owned vacant building that was once the Yorktown Memorial Hospital. Built in 1950 and operated by the Felician Sisters of the Roman Catholic Church, the hospital remained in operation until it closed its doors in the late 1980s. It's reported that close to 2,000 people passed away in the building, and over the years, stories of strange occurrences have poured out from within its walls. Caretakers of the property often see and hear sounds emanating from within, as though the hospital were still in working order women crying out as if in labor, the groans of individuals in a great deal of pain, disembodied conversations, and shadowy figures moving from room to room are commonly experienced. Investigators who have repeatedly visited the building report encountering spirits who have identified themselves on several occasions and seem to recognize them upon their return, engaging in lengthy conversations via electric voice phenomena, or EVP, and the use of instrumental transcommunication ITC, devices. Orbs of light seen with the naked eye have been witnessed moving about the halls and doorways of Yorktown, and the activity within is no less active in the daylight hours than it is at night. While no one knows exactly what sets this hospital building apart from any other, one thing remains clear – Yorktown is one of the most consistently active paranormal locations in America. The Villisca Axe Murder House, Villisca, Iowa On the morning of June 10, 1912, the bodies of eight individuals were discovered bludgeoned and blood-soaked in the Moore family home in the tight-knit community of Villisca. J.B. Moore, his wife Sarah, their four children Herman, Catherine, Boyd, and Paul were all murdered, their skulls crushed with an axe, along with Lena and Ina Stillinger, two young girls who had spent the night. J.B. Moore's brother Ross had been alerted by neighbor Mary Peckham, who became concerned about the family's well-being when she realized there was no activity in the usually busy home. Ross's discoveries of the bodies sent the community reeling, as nothing quite like this had ever happened in their small town before. News spread quickly, and soon the house was overrun with those curious about the murders, which likely destroyed whatever evidence there might have been there. While there were still several suspects in the case, it was unfortunately never solved and remains a mystery to this day. In the years that have passed since the grisly discovery, the Moore home has had various owners and tenants, but in 1994 it was purchased and restored as closely as possible to its original condition 
by Darwin and Martha Lynn. Individuals who have stayed in the house have reported waking to the sound of children's voices when there were no children present at the time. Children's laughter, moving objects, and strange banging sounds are just a few of the experiences many have had in the Villisca Axe Murder House. We just covered the most famous of America's haunted places, but what about some of the not-so-famous ones? We'll look at a few when Weird Darkness returns. Hey, weirdos! So what brings you here? Our next Weirdo Watch Party is this Saturday, May 4th. But don't go too far. This Saturday night, Dario Evil and his Mausoleum of Terror present Boris Karloff in 1971's Isle of the Snake People. Or just Snake People, it depends on which poster you're looking at. It's neither here nor there. An evil scientist runs an army of LSD-crazed zombies. Come into my laboratory. I'd like to show you something. But then wouldn't that describe anybody on LSD? That is quite obvious. Our Weirdo Watch Party is always free to watch online, so grab your popcorn, candy, and soda and jump into the fun and even get involved in the live chat as we watch the movie. Let's go for a drink. Well, that's totally up to you. Modern science has shown that alcohol is responsible for 99.2% of all the world's sins. I guess we have a lot of liquor and LSD in this film. What is this? Oh, this? Uh, that's a creepy crate. During the Weirdo Watch Party, I'll be giving away a creepy crate to one lucky winner, full of scary surprises like horror collectibles, true crime-themed accessories, books, terrifying trinkets, and more, with some Weird Darkness swag added in. You won't know what's in the creepy crate until you open it, and I'll be giving you instructions on how to win the creepy crate inside the chat during the movie, so you have to tune in to win. Are you making advances toward me? Well, if that's what it takes to get you to tune in, it's Isle of the Snake People this Saturday, May 4th, hosted by Dario Evil. I only hope it works. The show begins at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Mountain, and 7 p.m. Pacific. You can watch a trailer for the film and watch horror hosts and schlocky B-movies anytime, day or night, on the Monster Channel page at WeirdDarkness.com. You don't feel bad. Uh, um, thanks? Uh, hope to see you this Saturday, May 4th. Leave this forgotten island in peace. Now, let's take a look at just a few of the lesser-known haunted locations that dot the American landscape. Some you may never have heard of, or haven't heard about in a long time. Nemecolin Castle, Brownsville, Pennsylvania Looking out over the Monongahela River in Brownsville, Pennsylvania is Nemecolin Castle, which was once a famous site on the old National Road. The three-story mansion, with its ramparts and turret, actually predates the town and was built on the site of Fort Byrd, a garrison from the days of the French and Indian War. The castle was built by Jacob Bowman, a local businessman who owned a nail factory and a paper mill, and was later a postmaster, justice of the peace, and bank president in Brownsville. As his wealth grew, so did his family. After he fathered nine children with his wife Isabella, he decided to build the mansion, which was completed in the early 1800s. In the years that followed, the house was not only a family home but also a stop on the Underground Railroad. It remained in the Bowman family until it was eventually donated to the local historical society, which maintains it today. Over the last few decades, the house has gained a reputation as one of the most haunted spots in southwest Pennsylvania. Staff members and visitors to the castle have reported strange happenings, from heavy disembodied footsteps to slamming doors the erratic behavior of lights, and full-bodied apparitions. The ghost of a little girl, who is normally seen in the middle part of the house, has been reported at least a dozen times over the past decade. Others have cited a small boy, a stern-looking older woman, a ghostly little dog, and even an older man who is believed to be Jacob Bowman himself. Tinker Cottage, Rockford, Illinois 
The Tinker Swiss Cottage in Rockford, Illinois stands today as one of the most unusual homes in the state. It was built by Robert Tinker, an unusual man in his own right. Born on December 31, 1836 in Honolulu, Hawaii to missionary parents, Robert came to Rockford, Illinois in 1856. He was employed as an accountant by Mary Dorr Manny, the wealthy widow of John H. Manny of the Manny Reaper Works. His inspiration for his amazing cottage came during his tour of Europe in 1862, where he fell in love with the architecture of Switzerland. In 1865, after returning to Illinois, he began building his 27-room Swiss-style cottage on a limestone bluff overlooking Kent Creek. He surrounded his Swiss cottage with over 27 acres of trees, vines, winding pathways, flower beds, and gardens. A three-story Swiss-inspired barn was added to the property, which housed cows, chickens, and horses. In 1870, Robert and Mary Manny were married and became one of Rockford's most influential couples. Tinker became mayor of Rockford in 1875. He was a founding member of the Rockford Park District and the CEO of the Northwest and IC Railroad Lines. Mary Tinker died in 1901, and Robert later remarried her niece, Jessie Dorr Heard. When Robert died in 1924, Jessie created a partnership with the Rockford Park District, allowing her to remain in the house until her death. After her death in 1942, the Park District acquired the property and opened the home as a museum in 1943. Over the years, visitors and staff members alike have experienced the hauntings here firsthand, from the sound of footsteps in the hallways and on the stairs, to voices, songs being hummed, and the eerie laughter of children. A home for terminally ill children was located nearby for more than 30 years, and often the children were allowed to play at the cottage. Could some of them linger behind at the place where they found happiness? Even skeptical staff members have been convinced of the haunting as they hear things they cannot explain and have seen objects move by something other than earthly hands. McCune Mansion, Salt Lake City, Utah Located in the Capitol Hill section of Salt Lake City, Utah is the McCune Mansion, built by Utah South Railroad and business tycoon Alfred McCune in 1900 at a cost of over $1 million. Born to a British Army officer and his wife in Calcutta, India, McCune immigrated with them to Utah Territory after they joined the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints LDS. By the time that he was 21, McCune had become a highly successful railroad builder and was connected to other millionaires of the era. He was a partner in the Peruvian Cerro de Pasco mines along with J.P. Morgan, William Randolph Hearst, and Frederick William Vanderbilt. He owned business interests throughout Utah and in parts of Montana, British Columbia, and South America. He and his wife Elizabeth traveled widely, and at one point, Elizabeth was entertained by Queen Victoria at Windsor Castle. McCune wanted his home to be an extravagant display of his wealth and financed a two-year tour of Europe for architect S.C. Dallas so that he could obtain design ideas. The new home towered over the surrounding streets and no expense was spared. It was constructed from red Utah sandstone, but other materials and furnishings were imported from all over the world. McCune and his wife lived in the home until 1920. Prior to moving to Los Angeles, they donated it to the LDS Church and it became the McCune School of Music. In the early 1950s, the mansion became the Brigham Young University Salt Lake City Center until 1972, when it was moved to a larger location. The mansion was sold in 1973 and became the Virginia Tanner Modern Dance School. Since then, the building has been privately owned, often used for wedding receptions and other short-term rentals. Though it is unclear why, the haunting in the house began soon after the McCunes moved out. Since then, the list of strange reports has continued to grow. Under the stairs is a room that was once used for music practice, and although this is no longer its purpose, instrumental music is still heard coming from within. Two apparitions have been seen in the house, a man in a long black coat and a little girl who resembles one of the portraits that hangs in the house. The young girl has been seen walking in and out of a mirror in the west end of the mansion. Another odd report involves phantom footsteps that begin and end in the center of rooms. There are also reports of items being moved about, furniture rearranged, lights turning on and off, the doors that unlock themselves even after being secured for the night and double-checked. 
the identity of the house's lingering spirits remains a mystery. Taliesin, Spring Green, Wisconsin Located in Spring Green, Wisconsin is Taliesin, a former summer home that belonged to its designer, Frank Lloyd Wright. It's become famous as one of the finest examples of his signature prairie-style architecture. But what most people don't know is that it was also the scene of a heinous crime in 1914 that left a haunting in its wake. Wright began building the house in 1911, soon after leaving his first wife and six children. He had been involved in a scandalous affair with Mama Borthwick Cheney, the wife of one of his clients. She left her husband to move to Spring Green while Taliesin was still under construction. Although Mama did not have primary custody of her two children, they were spending the day with her on August 15, 1914. Wright was in Chicago, supervising the construction of another project, while Mama and her children were eating lunch with several workmen in the dining room. A servant named Julian Carlton, who'd been fired earlier that day, locked them in the house, poured gasoline under the door, and set the house on fire. As the people trapped inside tried frantically to escape, Carlton attacked them with a hatchet, killing seven people, including Mama and her children. The tragedy destroyed the majority of Taliesin and most of the records of Wright's early work as well. Wright received a telegraph in Chicago and rushed to Wisconsin only to find the mansion, his family, and his life in ruins. Determined not to be defeated by this terrible turn of events, he rebuilt Taliesin in Mama's honor. But bizarrely, the second house also met with tragedy. In April 1925, a lightning storm started a fire in the house's telephone lines and it burned to the ground. Defiant against the forces of nature, Wright built a third incarnation of Taliesin on the same site, and that rendition has survived to this day. Taliesin is one of the most visited of Wright's homes in the country, and the most haunted. After the murderous events of 1914, the bodies of the victims were taken to a cottage on the property called Tanwidari. It is in and around this cottage where Mama's ghost has been reported over the years. She's usually dressed in a long white gown, and while she is a peaceful presence, she is obviously restless and lost. It's also said that doors and windows open and close by themselves within the cottage, and lights sometimes turn on and off. Witnesses say that they sometimes close the place for the night only to return the following day to find everything wide open. The events of the past have truly marked the house as a haunted place that will forever be linked to a tragedy of long ago. Prospect Place, Trinway, Ohio The unique mansion known as Prospect Place in the tiny town of Trinway was built by George W. Adams, who came to Ohio from Virginia in 1808. Already wealthy, Adams had inherited his grandfather's plantation but had freed all of the slaves that his family owned before selling the farm. Adams hated slavery and chose Ohio as his new home because it was a free state. Within two decades, he was one of the wealthiest men in the region. He owned two flour mills, built bridges and canals, and helped develop the town of Dresden. In addition, he provided free grain for the poor and offered his home as a safe house for slaves who escaped the South using the Underground Railroad. He built the Greek Revival-style Prospect Place in 1856. It was the first house in the state to have indoor plumbing and was fitted with a cupola on top of the house where signal light could alert runaway slaves that the place offered food and shelter. Injured, sick, or wounded slaves who did not survive their journey to freedom are among the spirits still believed to linger in the house. George Adams lived long enough to see slavery abolished in America before he died in 1879. He left his vast estate to his children, but over the years, relatives squandered it, and by the mid-1950s, the house was abandoned. It was later sold to the Cox Gravel Company, which offered tours of the mansion, but it steadily declined. By the 1980s, time and vandals had reduced the place almost to ruins, and it was slated for destruction. If not for the attention paid to the house by the famous Longaberger Basket Company of Ohio, it might have been lost. Company founder Dave Longaberger had recently purchased and renovated a number of historic buildings in the area, and he wanted to restore Prospect Place. Unfortunately, he passed away before work could be completed. But the house was rescued again, this time by George W. Adams, the great-great-grandson of the original owner. Work to restore and preserve the mansion is ongoing today. 
Prospect Place has long been regarded as the local haunted house by those who live in the area. The stories of the hauntings date back many years, and if even a portion of them are true, it is one of the most haunted houses in the state. In addition to the spirits of former slaves who linger in the house, there are also the ghosts of train accident victims who haunt the basement. After an accident on a nearby rail line, the wounded were brought to Prospect Place and the basement was turned into a temporary hospital. Their ghosts are now believed to haunt the underground rooms. Another ghost is believed to be that of a young girl who died in an accident at her house. Her ghost had been seen playing inside and outside of the mansion, and her girlish laughter has been frequently reported. A ghost who has been seen near a staircase on an upper floor is thought to be George W. Adams himself, or perhaps the spirit of William Cox, Adams' son-in-law, who mysteriously vanished in 1886 after absconding with a large part of his wife's inheritance. Some believe that he has been forced, in death, to return to the place where he carried out his betrayal. Thanks for listening. If you like the show, please share it with someone you know who loves the paranormal or strange stories, true crime, monsters, or unsolved mysteries like you do. You can also email me anytime with your questions or comments through the website at WeirdDarkness.com. That's also where you can find all of my social media, listen to free audiobooks, shop the Weird Darkness store, sign up for the newsletter to win monthly prizes, find my other podcast, Church of the Undead, and find the Hope in the Darkness page if you or someone you know is struggling with depression or dark thoughts. All stories in Weird Darkness are purported to be true unless stated otherwise, and you can find source links or links to the authors in the show notes. America's Most Haunted Places was written by Troy Taylor and April Slaughter for AmericanHauntingsInc.com. And America's Not-So-Famous Haunted Houses was also written by Troy Taylor for AmericanHauntingsInc.com. Weird Darkness is a production and trademark of Marler House Productions. Copyright Weird Darkness. And now that we're coming out of the dark, I'll leave you with a little light. 1 Peter 5, verse 7. Cast all your anxiety on Him, because He cares for you. And a final thought from Vanetta Chapman. Forget your mistakes, but remember what they taught you. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me in the Weird Darkness. Hey, weirdos! Be sure to click the like button and subscribe to this channel, and click the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I post videos seven days a week. And while you're at it, spread the darkness by sharing this video with someone you know who loves all things strange and macabre. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can find it at WeirdDarkness.com listen.